If you've clicked on this video, you're surely optimistic about India's future growth. And there's every reason to be. Just last year, a Bloomberg report brought joy to many Indians when it stated India had a 0% chance of entering a recession. As an NRI, you're probably itching to ride the wave of India's growth by investing in Bharat. But let's be real. Your residential status throws in a few more spicy ingredients into the mix, all thanks to the ever fun Income Tax Act and our dear friend FEMA. So, are you investing as an NRI? Well, it's a bit like learning a dance form. Just a few extra steps compared to the Indian residents. So, in this video, we're going to break down the NRI edition of mutual funds. If you're already familiar with basic concepts like mutual funds, you can jump right ahead to the relevant section. Timestamps are provided in the description box for your convenience. Imagine you have a big jar and you and some of your friends want to buy toys but you alone don't have enough money to buy all the toys you want. So everyone puts some of their money into the big jar. Now with everyone's money together in that jar, you have more than you had alone. Next, imagine your big sister is really good at picking the best of toys that will be the most fun to play with and won't break easily. So you all ask her to take the money from the jar and go to the toy store to pick out a bunch of great toys for all of you to share. She's super careful and tries to buy toys that will be fun now and still fun later. Now in this example, the big jar where everyone puts their money is like a mutual fund. You and your friends putting your allowance in the jar are like investors. The money you all put in is your investment. Your big sister is like the fund manager who is a smart person that decides the best way to use all the money in the jar to buy things. In real life, of course, these are usually stocks, bonds, or other investing instruments, not toys. Now, the toys your sister buys with the money in the jar are like the assets the mutual funds own, which could make the jar of money grow if they do well. Just like how your sister tries to pick the best toys, a fund manager tries to pick the best investments so the money in the jar can grow and you and your friends can all benefit. But how sometimes a toy might break or not be as much fun as you thought, investments can also go down in value, which means that sometimes Sometimes the money in the jar can also get smaller. So a mutual fund is like a big jar where lots of people put in their money and a smart person in this case, the fund manager, uses that money to try to make good choices to help the money grow over time. Now there are five categories of mutual funds. Equity funds, debt funds, hybrid funds, solution-oriented funds and other funds. If you need a detailed explanation on them, let us know in the comment section. We'll make a video of it. Alright, so you are an NRI or perhaps a PIO and you've got your eyes set on the dazzling world of Indian mutual funds. Can you dive right in and invest in Indian mutual funds? Absolutely. As long as you play by the Foreign Exchange Management Act aka FEMA rulebook. But wait a minute, there's a little twist in the tale. How do you know you're an NRI? Who defines that you are an NRI? The Income Tax Act and FEMA are like those two friends who can never agree on where to go for dinner. They have different definitions of what makes you an NRI. So who gets the final say when you're trying to figure out if you are an NRI or not for the purpose of investments? In the grand clash of titans, FEMA wears the crown when it comes to investments and with regard to taxation, it's the income tax. Now let's break down your royal decree from FEMA about your residential status. Under FEMA's watchful eye, you're considered an Indian resident if you've been in India for 183 days or more in the preceding financial year. Any less than that and voila, you're an NRI with a ticket to the world or at least to invest in Indian mutual funds. But this is where FEMA pulls a magic trick. There's an exception that might instantly transform you into an NRI right from the day you bid adieu to India. It's like FEMA's version of a golden ticket and hey, you might just be holding one without knowing it. So buckle up and listen carefully. If the Indian citizen has left India, especially for these three reasons, they'll be immediately considered an NRI and those three conditions are first, if he or she is leaving for the purpose of employment outside India or he or she is going to carry on any business or book outside India or for any purpose which indicates his or her intention to stay outside India for an uncertain period of time. And the moment you categorize into any of these three conditions, then the stay period is nullified. So let's say you left India for employment on 24th April 2020, even after staying for 183 days or more in the preceding year, you will still be classified as an NRI. So now that you know that you're an NRI, let's see the procedure to invest in mutual funds. 
So listen, this is a regulated space. So you definitely can't come up and invest in foreign currency. You can only make investments in rupees. And for that, you need to set up an account. So you can open either an NRE or an NRO account and invest through these accounts only. The amount stored in these accounts is in Indian rupees, not in foreign currency. If for a moment your mischievous side kicks in and you wonder if you can invest through a regular resident savings account, who would ever find out, right? Then my friend, you don't know that even having a resident savings bank account as an NRI is illegal and can cause huge trouble in your life. And if you don't know what NRE or NRO is, then we have covered the basic definitions in our video. Feel free to check it out. So open an NRE or NRO account to invest in mutual funds and do not dare to invest through a regular resident savings account. Now the question is, which will be more suitable for you to invest through NRE or NRO account? So NRE is a type of bank account used to store foreign earnings. On the other hand, NRO is a type of account where your Indian income is stored. Before deciding on the bank account you'll use for your investments, I'd like to introduce you to some technical terms, that is, investment on repatriation and non-repatriation basis. Investing on a repatriation basis means that the NRIs have the ability to move the investment amount, principal and interest, back to their country of residence. To invest in Indian mutual funds on a repatriation basis, NRIs must have an NRE, which is a non-resident external bank account in India. The investments need to be made through inward remittances from abroad or funds held in NRE accounts. After the investment matures, NRIs can transfer both the principal amount and the returns earned back to their foreign bank account. Investing on a non-repatriation basis means that the NRIs cannot move the principal and interest amount back to the foreign country. To invest on a non-repatriation basis, NROs must have an NRO, which is a non-resident ordinary bank account in India. The investments can be made from the funds in the NRO account. The NRO account can be funded from either abroad or through domestic sources like rent, dividends, etc. in India. While the principal amount remains non-repatriable, the interest earned on the amount can be repatriated subject to certain conditions and limits defined by the Reserve Bank of India. Now, once the account is activated, an NRI can invest using these methods. The first option is self or direct. An NRI can carry out transactions, debiting or crediting through normal banking channels. Your application with the required KYC details must indicate that the investment is uh, on a repatriable or non-repatriable basis. KYC documents consist of these all documents. Apart from that, the bank may require an in-person verification too. And as an NRI, you must comply with it by visiting the Indian Embassy in your resident country. Second is through the power of attorney. Picture this, your trusted cousin Ravi back in India could be your knight in the shining armour. With a simple but powerful tool called power of attorney, Ravi can roll up his sleeves and dive into the world of mutual funds on your behalf. He can invest, manage and basically be the superhero of your financial portfolio. Your Bruce Wayne, he's your financial Batman. But wait, there's a catch because even superheroes need rules, right? For this dynamic duo to work, both you, the NRI investor, and your trusty POA Ravi need to put pen to paper and sign those KYC documents. It's the mutual fund world's version of a secret handshake. So while you're chilling in New York or London, sipping on your chai latte or Earl Grey tea, Ravi back home in India could be judiciously watching the Sensex and Nifty for you, ensuring your investments are dancing, hopefully not doing the twist, but to the rhythm of the markets. Isn't that just splendid? After you set up a bank account and decide the route, either direct or through power of attorney, the next step that follows is documentation. To enter the world of Indian mutual funds, you have to get past the gatekeeper, KYC or know your customer. Think of it as the mutual fund world secret handshake. First up, a KYC form awaits your autograph. Fill it, sign it, it's your VIP pass to the investment party. Next, the identity parade. A self-attested copy of your passport and PAN card will do. It's like saying it's me without the need for a dramatic entrance and your address. They need the full scoop, both your local and overseas addresses. They're not being nosy. It's just protocol. They promise not to send any random postcards. A cancelled check of your NRE or NRO account is next on the list. Now, the big choice is to be the captain of your financial ship and sail 
through with online transactions from your NRE or NRO accounts or hand the compass to a trusted power of attorney to navigate the investment seas. If it's POA, it's a do it. Both your signatures need to dance on those KYC papers. If you're opting to pay for mutual funds via check or a demand draft, don't forget the all-important foreign inward remittance certificate. Think of it as the fund's VIP pass, verifying that your funds have the right credentials. For NRIs, the digital highway of online banking is open for mutual fund investments. And when it's time to redeem, your investment returns like a boomerang right back to its source account. However, here's a pro tip. Always double check with the fund house because as they say, better to be safe than sorry, especially when money is involved. KYC, the official handshake before the money party starts, requires something called IPV or in-person verification. Sounds formal, right? But here's the good news. It's 2023 and you can now do this on a video call like Skype, Appear.in, you name it. Gone are the days when someone had to knock on your door to check your papers. Just set up a time with authorized agencies. Show your original documents on camera and you're good to go. And only the entities mentioned on your screen have the authorization to carry out an IPV. Also, a note to the NRIs in the US and Canada. If you're eyeing Indian mutual funds, then watch out for FATCA. It might lead to some fund houses saying no entry. But don't lose hope. Some are still rolling out the welcome mat with specific conditions via offline transactions. So NRIs, if you're ready to dive into Indian mutual funds, then here's a quick tip. When you cash out money from a mutual fund and make a profit or a capital gain, then there's a little farewell party called taxation that comes into the picture. If you're an NRI investing in Indian MFs, guess what? Your tax treatment is pretty much the same as your buddies back home in India. Yup, there is no special NRI rate or anything. But, and there's always a but. Remember that for NRIs, there's a tax that gets deducted right at the source when you redeem those mutual fund units. It's like a small detour your money takes before it reaches your account. Now, this little detour doesn't happen for residents though. Just one of those quirks to keep in mind. Okay. Imagine this, you're an NRI living it up somewhere and boom, both India and your current country want a piece of your pie when you make gains on your investments. Not cool, right? Well, India's got your back. It's shaken hands with over 80 countries through this thing called Double Taxation Avoidance Agreement or DTAA. Yes, that includes biggies like the US, Canada and the UK. What does it mean for you? You won't get taxed twice. You can just show the tax you paid in India when filing in your residing country and get a cool tax break. To wrap your head around taxation in the context of mutual funds in India, you need to break it down for equity and non-equity, which is debt funds. Now, first up, equity-oriented fund. If you part ways with your equity fund units within one year of buying, that's a short-term capital gain or as we say, STCG. The tax on these gains is 15%. It's like a small slice of your profit by going to taxes. And if you stay patient and sell them after a year, you you've just entered the long-term capital gain zone, LTCG. The first one lakh of your gains are tax-free. Anything above that is taxed at 10%. It's like getting to keep most of your profit pie with just a sliver going to taxes. For the non-equity funds, think debt or hybrid or gold. Since 1st April 2023, the tax playbook for debt funds has been shaken up. Previously, holding your debt fund for over three years meant a 20% tax, but with a friendly indexation assist to cushion the blow. From now on, whether you're making a quick exit or playing the long game with your debt mutual funds, your capital gains, short term or long term, will be scooped up and added right into your income. Then it will be seasoned with tax according to your own tax slab. There's no more special treatment based on how long you've held it. Here Here's the cherry on top. The spicy new rule will kick in only for investments made on or after 1st April 2023. If you've done investments before that date, then no worries, they'll cook under the old recipe. They aren't going anywhere and will follow the previous tax rules. Till then, I hope you learned something new from this video and all that we discussed until now. If you want us to further expand on these topics, do let us know in the comment section. Until then, next time.